Bagging up the screws, bagging up the screws. We are all happy cause we're bagging up some screws. Yeah. Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back office. You can see the camera's really super zoomed in today, and that's because I've got something so tiny to share with you. And that's these. These are those rare earth magnets, but teeny ones. And uh, someone can please correct me on the pronunciation of these. I always forget how to pronounce them because I only really ever see it written and nobody tends to pronounce them. And I don't have written in front of me what they actually are. I think it's nibidium, nibidium, something like that. And look at them, they're teeny, tiny, touchy ones. Whee! Um, I ordered these because I ordered them from a picture and I was looking for ones about a centimetre in diameter, maybe about eight millimetres, something like that. And then I got these and went, oh yeah, sense of scale. Because if you zoom in, clearly you could make them look quite big. So here's my little tower of magnets. And I'm going to say they're not... Yeah, actually they are pretty strong. They're probably strong for their size. You know, and then I was sort of racking my brains to think, what am I going to do with these? Can I think of a use? And a use has presented itself. Now I've got these screwdrivers, and these are really, really pants ones. And I just, in fact, it's a really bad example because they kind of are not magnetic most of the time, whereas this one is a bit magnetic. Let's try another one. Yeah, they're all a little bit magnetic, but. I think I've sort of embarrassing myself a little bit, but to sort of hint that they're not, but they really are not magnetic enough in use. So when you put a screw on the end and you go to screw it in, it'll just sort of flop off, drop off, just be generally quite annoying. So what I've wondered was if I took one of these magnets, which I have clearly plenty of, I could place them on the little nut thing on the end. You see right there, that little nut thing? And maybe they'd make the screwdriver more magnetic. Now, I don't know how to test this other than I've got a screw on the end and I'm going to just remove the magnet. Does the screw do anything? <gasps> no, not really. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's pretty lame. In fact, look, whoa, what happened there? Did you see that? That has actually demagnetized, if anything, the screwdriver. That's some freaky science stuff right there. If I move this. Whoa, science guys. So what I suspect is, gosh, the flux around from the poles is so strong. It's sort of warping time and space, preventing this being useful. So yeah, that's a pretty crap experiment and a pretty crap solution. Unfortunately, not all experiments work out. Now, something that is useful with this, and I know will definitely work, if I plop this magnet on the end of my screwdriver and then I waggle, you can't see it's slightly off camera, but I'm waggling my screwdriver around my filthy, filthy work area, that happens. So at least it allows me to use it as a sort of retrieval device, although I have to kind of retrieve my magnet back out of the pile. Yep, maybe I should just leave it all as a big pile and just move the pile around. Pretty pants. So if you've got any idea of what I can do with a number of these magnets, and I don't really know how many there are. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, maybe seven per centimetre. So you could sort of work out how big a standard square business card is and then you can work out how many are. I've got plenty of them. Um, let me know and I'll have a go making it. Please don't set me uh, plans for making one of those um, energy machines that's supposed to just run forever and ever and ever infinite thing because it's got loads of magnets because they don't work. They don't obey the laws of thermodynamics. So thank you very much guys. Thank you for bearing with me on my magnetic failure. As ever, thanks for watching.